Hey there YouTube, um, today I want to talk about uh, All the King's Men by Robert Penn Warren and I'm going to start with a quote. <clears throat> and what we students of history always learn is that the human being is a very complicated contraption and that they are not good or bad but are good and bad and good comes out of the bad and the bad comes out of the good and the devil takes the hindmost. Okay, so I read this novel earlier this year and might I add, it was a beautiful journey from front to back, but I read it, like I said earlier this year, so, you know, um, I had to, my review might not be as good as I want it to be. Anyways, it's a pretty short one. Uh, Willie Talos, the main character, um, Stark in most versions, uh, he is the man you and I want to be. He's rich, he's famous, he's loved, he's powerful, he's smart, eloquent, handsome, and the list goes on. And what it is is he becomes the governor of a state despite his uh, precarious odds and you know he was brought up um, anonymous and poor and uh, is allowed but when he becomes governor he's allowed to rule with an iron fist uh, basically and uh, but it's not just about him it's also about uh, his counterpart um, Jack Burton um, and despite being uh, Willie Taylor, Governor Taylor's most trusted compatriot uh, he's let's say he's not Governor Tails, he's the opposite. Um, he's like you, he's like me. Um, he's a nobody, but at the same time, he's also you know everybody for to Willie Taylor's. He's he's the king's man, basically, you know, hence the title. Um, he's a historian, he failed his uh, he dropped out of his PhD dissertation. Uh, he does Willie's research, and by research, I mean he digs up. Um, dirt on Willie's opponents to try to blackmail them to get what he wants. Uh, so how the story is structured is we learn the uncovering events of the narrative as it is juxtaposed you know with the past so it's the present and the past kind of going on uh, at the same time uh, so switching off back and forth by chapter I think um, yeah pretty much and uh, it informs the reader how uh, Governor Talos gets into politics as fir at first, and we first see him uh, right before the first campaign he runs, uh, which is also the first time Jack Burden, basically the main, the protagonist, the main character, uh, meets him. And what happens is <clears throat> um, we learn about his rise to power at first, um, as that's as he is in power. But of course, with every rise to power, there's usually a plummet. And might I add, Willie and Jack fall straight to Bedlam. Um, the reason we get the two separate storylines, or arguable, it's really the same storyline with the beginning at the end told really at the same time, um, because time is a big theme. Uh, I looked into it, and the word time actually comes up 579 times in the novel, which is like one time it's mentioned per page. It's a pretty long book. And... Uh, and as we all know, time is a measure of change, so it's a big theme in the book. People change, uh, the times change, the old becomes the new, you know, and, you know, it's basically comparing, contrasting what was and what is, and, you know, what and how that affects things. So this novel, um, one of the many questions it tries to answer is, um, it considers why is change indispensable with the progress of time? Um, and who is responsible for this ch for the direction of that change? You know, why do certain things come to be, and um, yeah, and what goes into that? This book, if you know anything about it, it's a tragedy. Um, one of the best tragedies um, ever, stories, hands down, to me at least. And uh, it also has strong thematic elements of the sins of our fathers. But we don't just see those two separate storylines that I just mentioned earlier, but we also get to see Jack Burden's childhood, his like his true past, and it does play into the story, you know, particularly at the end, and with the decisions he makes. Furthermore, what I loved about this novel in particular is that the events taking place, uh, in terms of the the world that they're in, um, is directly caused by the actions of the characters themselves, um, which makes the amount of depth and thought upon creating the characters by Warren. Uh, is, you know, I think is pure genius because it really, um, it matters how he, uh, you know, the characters matter, like, 
if different people were put into the positions they were in, things would have turned out differently. But, you know, it's because of that these particular people were in these positions that things end up the way they are. And uh, no, I, th I think that's pretty cool. It's really a mark of what a good story should be. You know, the character should really matter in this way. Actions and consequences should be um, brought upon by the characters themselves, not just random things happening to them. I reviewed a book before this one, and it was Kurt Vonnegut's The Sirens of Titan. And like The Sirens of Titan, uh, All the King's Men, it tries to answer the question, you know, basically what I call the why life question. Um, so the why life question, it's, uh, it's basically, it dares to answer, uh, question and answer, you know, humanity and with the, everything that's going on around this, why things are what they are, and, you know, every good book should have, you know, some sort of answer or some sort of, uh, um, input towards what, you know, towards life in general, or why would you, why else do you read, right? Um, it, it's commenting on something. Uh, and and in, in this in this book in particular, uh, Jack Burden, he talks about uh, the Great Twitch Theory. The Great Twitch Theory is basically another rendition, I think, of what the Sirens of Ti how the Sirens of Titan uh, answered that wildlife question. But in this novel, it's answered in a different way. The Great Twitch Theory, we learn about it via Jack's Jack Burden's internal monologue. It's his, um, it's his whole life and all the events that's happening right now, his cynicism is what uh, makes him think this way. Uh, it's, it's the only way he can almost live with himself and describe why he... It's almost his excuse... <clears throat> it's almost his excuse of uh, being who he is, of um, his excuse of being able to help the corrupt Willie Talos with his power and how he survived all this time. Whereas in Vonnegut's uh, Sirens of Titan, the answer to the why life question, it happens through the events that are going on and it's told to us implicitly with the events where in uh, All the King's Men it's explicitly described by Jack Burns in Sermon Monologue. Um, so with all that being said, I thought that this, the writing of this book, finally, my last thoughts on this book, uh, the writing of this book is impeccable. Actually, impeccable is probably an understatement. I really loved it. Uh, it's very vivid. Um, Warren is very eloquent. And uh, it's um, the imagery is based practically IMAX 3D for a novel. And I think you should check it out just for that in itself. I haven't checked out anything else that's been written by Warren. Uh, I think he's a poet as well. I should probably check some of that out. But, you know, I think you should pick, probably pick up All the King's Men if you're looking for a new book to read. I haven't seen the movie. I heard it sucks. Maybe someday I'll encounter it. But, you know, uh, what else I can answer? Yeah, that's my thoughts on All the King's Men. My name is Eve. Check out the link below. The written versions of my reviews are much better, I promise. And I'll see you next time. Uh, this, mo uh, this novel was, to me, uh, a masterpiece. So. Just my thoughts.